I get a lot of questions about poor performance, dropouts, and other issues on Windows PCs that are being used for audio production with DAWs, as well as video recording and streaming with apps like OBS Studio. And this isn't limited to Windows, I get the same questions about Mac. Now it may surprise you to know that even with a brand new installation of Windows and a brand new install of your DAW or other app, your computer still might not be configured in the best way to get great performance. And so today I'm going to share with you my top seven tips on how to configure your Windows PC to get the best performance for audio and video workflows. Plus stick around to the end, I'm going to have a bonus tip that's going to help you deal with many common Windows audio conflicts as well as VST issues. Now the first tip is to disable system sounds. And we're not doing this just so we're not annoyed with that playing in the background. The fact is, audio cutting in and out in the background on Windows can often cause driver glitches and other issues when we're using a DAW. And so to do that, you just want to go ahead and type control in the search box and you get control panel app. Open that up and then go into the sound panel. Simply click on it and it'll open up for you. Now once you're there, you're going to click on sounds and all it is is a matter of changing the default scheme from Windows default to no sounds. You can then click apply, OK, and you're ready to go. Next, we want to configure the PC for high performance. And so again, in the control panel, this time we want to click on power options. And make sure you're on the high performance setting. It's just a matter of clicking that. And while we're here, we want to go into the change plan settings option and make sure we have turn off display as well as put the computer to sleep, both set to never. That way we're not going to be interrupted during long sessions. And also these are background processes that we don't need running. For the third tip, we're going to configure your PC to schedule your CPU or processor to get the best performance for audio and video. And so again, in control panel, we're going to click on system and that'll open up the Windows system box and we want to find advanced system settings along the right hand side. So click that and it's going to open up a dialog box. Once we're there, we're going to click on the performance settings and then we're going to choose the advanced tab. Now that we're there, you'll see this option for adjust performance uh, for program or background services, best performance. Now, if you're using an audio workflow like DAWs, without a question, background services is going to be your best option. It's going to help ensure that your system gives the right priority to all of your audio drivers and processes, including VSTs running in the background. Now, if you're a video streamer, especially using games on the same PC, so like a one stream PC setup, you may need to leave this set as programs. But otherwise, for most cases, background services is going to give you the best performance with the fewest glitches or dropouts. Now, USB devices are a common cause of issues, dropouts and other glitches on PCs. Sometimes it has to do with the driver from the manufacturer. But there's a lot we can do with settings in Windows to actually make sure that these things are running at their best. And so this is kind of a two part tip. So the first thing we want to do is go back again into the power options and the change plan settings. And we want to go to the advanced power settings. And in here, we're going to find the USB settings. We'll open that up and you'll see USB selective suspend setting. And you want to make sure you have this disabled. If it's configured as enabled, just simply click on it and then change to disabled and hit apply. For the next part of this tip, you need to go into device manager. So to get to there again, go to the search box and type device and you'll see the option come up. And once we're in there, we want to go to the section on USB. So I'll close that up and I'll just open up the USB bus controllers. And you'll have a number of them here depending on how your system is set up. But the key is to go through each one right click on it and choose properties and then go to the power management tab and make sure that the allow the computer to turn off this device to save power is not selected if you see the checkbox click on it so that it's turned off and then choose ok you need to go through and do this with each device it's amazing how many times windows will just turn off devices that are required Maybe they just haven't been used for a while in a session and you bring them back. And this applies to both audio and video devices. So whether you're having issues with an audio interface or even with a USB video capture card, this a lot of times is going to solve the problem for you. Now, even on a new clean installation of Windows, there can be a lot of background applications running. 
So we wanna disable any that we're not using. They're just tying up CPU cycles that could be better put towards audio or video. Now to do this, you need to click on the start button and go into settings. And then you're gonna find the area that says privacy. So we'll click on privacy and you're gonna to need to scroll down on the left to get to where it says background application. So it's a little ways down. And you're gonna see a whole list of applications come up. And there's gonna be things here you know, like I didn't even know I have this bingo at home installed on the computer. It's probably just one that came along with Windows. So I just get rid of that. I'm going to uninstall that actually. But normally you can just go ahead and turn things off that you don't need running in the background. Like I don't know why I need calculator running. Um, there's, I uh, can keep going down here, mail and calendar maybe. A few other things though, you know, like do I want notifications from Adobe coming through here? Do I want notifications on Creative Cloud? Maybe I do, but... Probably not when I'm in the middle of a music session. I can always re-enable those if I use the computer for more than just audio and video. So go through that, close up anything. It's not gonna get rid of the application, but what it'll do is it'll prevent it from running in the background, again, interfering with audio video work that we're trying to do. Now we know it's important to keep our operating system up to date. So Windows Update is something you do want to use, but it can be an issue when it's running in the background while you're trying to do work in a DAW or a live stream or recording with an app again like OBS Studio. And so for this tip, we need to go into the start menu again, choose settings. This time we're gonna to go to update and security. And when you click that, it's gonna tell you what you have ready as far as updates. It's telling me my computer's ready for Windows 11, but my workflow isn't ready for Windows 11 yet. I'm not an early adopter on these things because I need my PC to be reliable again for audio and video production work. So. I'm going to scroll down here though to this advanced options. You need to choose that. And here what we need to do is tell it when we want to have updates going on. And what we can do with this is we can actually just pause the updates. And so if we choose pause, we can pause up into a certain time. That way it'll come back and it'll keep doing the updates after we're finished with our workflow. This is really important. I mean, if we just shut it off so that it never does updates, we might forget to turn it on and there might be a vulnerability or a conflict with a software driver update that we get on something else. So it's still important to do this, but just know that you don't want this running in the background. Now, even if you're only doing audio production on your PC, your graphics driver is still very important. It's actually one of the main causes of instabilities in a lot of PC installations. Now, depending on whether your computer has an external GPU from Nvidia, AMD, or even Intel, the way to do this is going to be a little different. The same thing applies though if you're using onboard graphics. It's just that's generally managed pretty well by Windows Update. Now I've gone ahead and opened up GeForce Experience here to show you this. I don't normally keep this app running on my system, but a lot of you may like to use this as a way to install a graphics driver. And you'll see here that it's showing me I have an update for the NVIDIA Studio Driver. And I use a Studio Driver on my PC. NVIDIA also offers a game ready driver so it depends on your workflow. Game ready drivers have the newest optimizations for the latest software that's come out. Whereas studio driver is meant to be more stable, great for audio and video production. And so after this, you just simply go ahead and install the update, follow the instructions. Know that you can also again, go directly to the manufacturer website and download the latest driver from there. Now, for those of you that have made it through to the end of the video, I have my bonus tip, and this is a really big one. If you're having issues with audio dropout, conflicts, even VST plugins not working properly with your DAW or OBS Studio. Now to do this, we need to go into the Windows Task Manager. And you can either do that by right clicking down here on the taskbar and choosing Task Manager, or again in the search box, you can type task and it will show up. Once you open it, you'll get all your programs that are running here. And what you wanna do is go over to Details. So the Details tab, and then scroll down and get to audio DG. You'll see this here, audio ODG.exe. If this isn't here, all you need to do is open up an application that uses audio, like OBS or your DAW, and it'll show up. Once you're there, you want to right click on it, and there's two things we need to do. First, we're going to go to priority and set it to high. This is going to ensure that we get most priority delivered to this process. And this process is the one that controls all Windows audio. So it's really important. The next thing we want to do is right click on it and then go and set affinity. Now you'll see that by default, it's going to have all processors. Now 
depending on the CPU you have, you'll have uh, you know a number of threads here. I have a, an AMD 5900X, so you'll see that it's going all the way up to CPU 23, plus there's a zero, so that's 24 threads. It's a 12 core, 24 thread CPU. Yours may be different. But what we want to do is actually not have this happening because when it's all, all cores, what will happen is Windows will dynamically move this around between the various threads and that can cause a lot of issues and conflicts, dropouts with things like audio and video where latency is really important. So what we want to do is disable this all processes and you want to choose any of the options that are an even number but not zero. So you could choose two or you could click on four or six. Depending on your computer, again, you'll have more or less of these. So I'm going to choose two and I'm gonna click on OK. And this is gonna give you the most stable performance with Windows Audio Management. Even if you're using an ASIO driver with your interface, Windows Audio is still aware that you have an interface plugged in and it's managing processes around that. So it's really important to go and configure this process, again, for high priority and a CPU affinity to an even number. The reason I say an even number is those are the physical cores, not the hyper-threaded cores, uh, which are kind of artificially created, if you will. So it's important to do it this way. Set this up and you'll solve a lot of your VST and other Windows audio conflicts. And now that we have your PC set up for audio and video production, now might be a good time to check out one of these other tutorials or gear reviews. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Todd and I'll see you next time.